before we start, can you just all take a minute to appreciate my family video shirt? RIP, man, RIP. I did work for a family video for six years, right up until they closed, till the bitter end. It was just like the chillest job ever. Like I, I'm really sad that it's gone and I just loved it. The atmosphere in there was just immaculate. As much as I love books, and obviously that's all I talk about on this channel, I have like an equal love for movies and television and it's why I have a podcast popcorn chats that I host with one of my friends. And on there we talk about that so I can get my book fix out on here and my movie and TV show fix out on there. And oh, just RIP man, RIP. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. What's up, I'm McKay and today we're gonna be doing a little Colleen Hoover reading vlog because she's blowing up. I mean, I know she's been popular for years and years and years before I even knew that like romance was a genre. So I have a lot of catching up to do. And when I first found BookTube a few years ago, I read Hopeless and Confessed by her. And I was like, Mm. I did not like either of those books and I did not get the hype and I was like I really don't understand why everyone loves Colleen Hoover so much and then I read It Ends With Us and I was like okay so you have me here you have me here and from there then I read Ugly Love and I loved that one as well so I was like okay I'm on a roll here so I wanted to read three of her other popular books that I haven't read so far and obviously do like a little reading vlog the three that I'm going to be reading in this video that you'll see is November 9th all Your Perfects, and then Verity. That's the only one I don't own a paperback of. So you'll see all the vlog footage here in a second, and then at the end I'm gonna wrap up all of my final thoughts and, and kind of my overarching feelings about what I read over the course of these three books. I will just say, some people are gonna be mad at me because I did not like one of these books. I did not like it, and I would lump it in with Confess and Hopeless in terms of just being like, it just did not work for me. No shade, no tea. If it worked for you, I'm so happy that you loved it. Not every book is for every person and the one in here was clearly just not for me. But the other two I absolutely loved and I can't wait to talk about. So let's jump into the vlog footage and then I will see you again at the end to wrap up my final thoughts. Um, so I only got two or three chapters into Verity last night because I was really sleepy by the time that I went to bed. But I will just say opening sentence, a plus that is something that has always stuck with me from college in my writing class i had a college professor my sophomore year who was really really big on like first sentences in a book a short story whatever it is that you're writing that your first sentence you it's well thought out it's attention grabbing but it's not like over the top or anything and this was a first sentence of a book that i was like yep i'm into it and I'm already was like engrossed. Again, just Colleen Hoover's writing just flows for me. It just works. I don't ever feel like I'm working at reading it. So far, I'm already very curious and like what a deal. And I really like Lowen, our main character so far, how she's kind of like, I have a resting board face. I'm like, I get it because I also have like a resting board slash resting bitch face. So I get it, Lowen, I'm with you. Okay, I feel like this is way too early to make a prediction and also way too obvious, but after finishing chapter six, is there a way that maybe Verity killed both of her daughters and then Jeremy messed up Verity in, real in retaliation? Like, I feel like that's way too obvious right now, but that's just like my initial thought of the whole thing. But again, I just, I feel like that's gonna be too obvious. Or did I already just catch on? We shall see. Okay, here's why I suck at reading like mystery thriller books, because all I do is try to spoil, I don't purposely try to spoil by myself. Like I don't flip ahead or anything, but as I'm reading, I just can't stop thinking about what the final twist is gonna be until like I've come up with almost every possible scenario. So I don't know, I feel like that's what I keep doing because now I'm like, what if Verity's autobiography is fake? What if like Jeremy wrote it and is trying to paint Verity in a bad light so that way like Lowen will see that? I don't know. And then the other thing is I'm like, what if Verity purposely crashed her car so then that way Jeremy would have to like take care of her? I mean, yes, there was a possibility of dying, but maybe she was like fine with that too. But she was like, what if I get like immobilized and then Jeremy has to take care of me because she's obsessed with Jeremy. I don't know. And Jeremy seems a little too perfect. No way. And the knife, the knife going missing. Fuck no. Um, Verity staring at her. Uh-uh. Um, they're just... Oh, in the basement door that Jeremy said was installed wrong doesn't sit right with me. That just seems like an odd note, you know? 
it's just all sus. Okay, I just got back from seeing Fast 9. I'm like the biggest Fast and Furious fan. I obviously have never talked about that on this channel before. But now that I'm back from my movie, I'm like a little too wired up <laughs> from the movie. So I want to finish Verity. I have 51 minutes left, but here's my dilemma. Um, it's nighttime. It's like 1030 and it scares me to read scary things at night because it just, I just get creeped out. I was getting kind of creeped out earlier when I was reading it. Um, Verity, bitch. I don't trust you. I feel like I know how this is going to play out, but I also have no idea how this is going to play out. And it's like, it's really kept me on the edge of my seat. It's been a long time since I've read a thriller and I'm thoroughly enjoying myself with it. And couple that with Colleen Hoover's writing, which I just really enjoy and I think flows so easily. I'm so invested in this story and I feel like I feel a five out of five stars. Depending on how this reveal goes down, I'm feeling a five out of five rating from me. I'm on chapter 21. Here's my last, I feel like this is gonna be my last prediction that I make. So what if Jeremy actually wrote the manuscript that she's been reading and painting Verity in this like really fucked up light in order to get Lowen to fall in love with him? I feel like Jeremy's just gotta be sus somehow, right? Cause so Jeremy just snuck into her room while, and he's like, I'm putting Verity in a home or like a facility. She'll come home three nights a week, whatever, or three weekends a month, whatever. And they have sex and he doesn't pull out this time. And she says something. She's like, Verity's writing only made me fall in love with him more. And then like he, I don't know, I don't know. There were just a few little things in that chapter that got me thinking that what if Jeremy actually wrote the manuscript to make Ver to make Lowen fall in love with him. I don't know. I don't know. But Harper's death fucked up. Fucked up. You're gonna start this check-in for me? I don't think I've made any check-ins so far for All Your Perfects, but I'm on chapter 11. I'm on page 107. So far, I, I am liking it a lot. Again, like the first chapter, just like the premise is interesting of uh Graham and Quinn showing up outside of Quinn's fiance's apartment and she's like who is this random man out here like he might try to kill me and then he's like oh uh, yeah my girlfriend's in there with your fiance and I just it's cool circumstance not cool okay that sucks tragic but it's uh it makes for an interesting circumstance in how they meet and I like the time jump every other chapter going then and now I like the rhythm I will just say the now chapters are not as fun to read. Stop scratching the couch now, bro. I like the then chapters better because they're just like fun, you know? Like you can just tell, hi, okay, Arya has joined us now as well. I think the now chapters are just kind of hard to read because Quinn is in such a sad, empty place. It does feel a little repetitive of like constantly repeating like why she's sad and how she doesn't like Graham's touch anymore and whatever, that I am hoping that there's maybe some sort of hope or something coming soon, but also I feel like that's a little unfair of me to ask when really we've only had five chapters in this and I feel like all of her pain can't be glossed over just because like I want to see the happier parts. Um, like we need to go through this journey with her. First tears of the book are down. <laughs> um, I'm on chapter 21 and chapter 20 was brutal. Um, I think first of all that fight was great i love a well-written fight i think it's just so hard because these characters are both in so much pain they both are like angry at themselves more than they're angry at each other and you can still see how much they love each other but they don't know how to get back to the point that they used to be at and especially when you're jumping back and forth to the then chapters and they're so happy and they're so in love. Reading them falling in love while reading them now when they both are like so disconnected from each other. It's just sad to read, but it's also done so well. You know how when you're reading a book and you're just feeling like a five star rating? I've kind of been feeling that from the beginning and it's like really getting solidified here from me. It would have to take something drastic to make me end up not liking this book because right now I am just really really loving it. Miss Colleen. <laughs> you play with my emotions once again. Like, I don't even know what to say. I just finished chapter 22. They just found out that she had a miscarriage and that she had to have a hysterectomy and, oh. Uh, 
tears. That's all I can say right now is tears. I don't know what made me think of this, but I just realized this. I never did my um, like last check-in for all your perfects. I'm gonna save most of my thoughts for the end of the video here when I do kind of like my wrap up, but I will just say that I cried a lot towards the end and that's why I did a check-in because I was pretty much just spending my time crying. And this epilogue in this book is one of the only epilogues that I think I've ever read where I felt like it made sense for the book and I didn't feel like it was a waste of time. And them then adopting that cute little dog at the end, oh, that made me tear up too because whenever I think of animals not having homes, that makes me sad. Another five out of five from Miss Colleen. Uh, I still think It Ends With Us is my all-time favorite, but I did really like this one a lot and I, I'm, ready to, I'm ready for November 9th. So Aria and I, hey, oh, stop. So Aria and I are here for our first, oh, oh, there we go, little bean. Oh, okay, bye bean, bye babe. First November 9th update. Oh, that's aggressively close, hello. Oh, look at you, you're the star, aren't you? First November 9th update, I am not rushing back. I just finished the first, like, November 9th. It's broken down, I think, over, like, the number of November 9ths they meet each other. And I'm not obsessed. Just right off the bat, I'm not, like, instantly connected. And I'm not instantly into the story like I have been with the two other books in this video. And with, like, Ugly Love and It Ends With Us. I'm just not, like, there yet with this one. I don't, like, love Ben. I'm not loving him. I'm hoping that maybe we'll see him, like, mature over time. Because they are 18 right now. And I'm assuming, like, we're going to see a lot of growth over the years. If this whole entire book is told, like, one year at a time. I do like Fallon. I will say that she's kind of, like, my redeeming quality so far of this book. But I don't know. There's just a bit of disconnect at the beginning of this one for me. And I think it's because of the character. Like, I'm just really not super connected yet, so. So I just finished the second November 9th that they spend together. And the first half of it, I was like, I still just, I'm just not clicking with Ben or Fallon. I do like Fallon. And I like the fact that she's not like this perfect heroine that is just kind of like cookie cutter. I do like the fact that, you know, she has these scars and like that's a big part of her emotional connection, I feel like with Ben. And I do like that. And I like seeing that, seeing something different in a heroine like that. However, Ben is not really clicking with me like at all. I'm really not liking him that much. I think he's, he's fine, but I really just don't really care about him whatsoever and I'm not vibing. I did like at least that in this chapter we got a little bit of insight into his family and that little like Miles mention. I was like, Miles, I love you. But I still just don't really buy them together. I don't know. I don't know. There's something about this one that I'm just not really like clicking with. And I do really like the premise of this book. So I think the premise is interesting, but the characters are what's falling flat for me. And I am such a character driven reader that I would rather have the plot kind of lacking and stronger characters than a stronger plot and lacking characters. So I think that's why this one is just not like doing it for me yet. I'm hoping that it picks up and that I end up liking it more. Just right now, I'm still kind of like meh on it. Tate and Miles cameo, yes. Yes, I love their little, that little tiny glimpse into the future of them and just that they're living and thriving and happy. Okay, I just finished the third November 9th. So now I'm like over halfway through the book. I mean, Ben's hiding something for sure, but I'm thinking that Ben's hiding something to do with Fallon. And I'm wondering if it has something to do with her accident. I don't know, I could be way off on this, but I feel like there's gotta be something in Ben's past that has somehow like intertwined with Fallon because a few of the like red flags, one just like, I, I just feel like Ben himself is kind of a red flag. Um, and then as soon as the first meeting with Kyle and the second November 9th, I don't think I read as much into it, but almost in this one more, I was thinking about it, that I feel like Kyle's reaction to seeing Ben with Fallon has something to do with that he knows something about Ben and maybe something to do with how he knows her or something. I I don't know. I just feel like there's got to be something sketchy with Ben and some sort of like reveal that's going to happen with him 
and something that he did to Fallon. But I'm ready to see how this shakes out. We're back. Enjoyed all the vlog footage, I hope. So I'm gonna start off with Verity. Ooh, I loved this. I think as you could tell from the vlog footage, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this book. And here's the thing for me, I really, I used to read a lot of thrillers and I used to read a lot of mysteries, but so many of those then I started getting duds and the endings and the final twists to me personally make or break a book and whether or not my overall enjoyment of it is high. And mm, I've had way too many breaks lately or I just have not liked it and it's ruined the whole book for me and I feel like I've wasted my time. I was kind of nervous going into this one but because it's like a romance I was interested like there's a romance plot to it I was I was more intrigued than other thrillers lately have intrigued me and this was so good so different than anything that I've read in a while and it was just a nice change of pace. I loved the storytelling aspect of it I loved the plot and the idea of this writer being in a coma and this other woman coming in to live in their house with her husband and their child and ghost write these books for her. I just thought the premise was very interesting. It was creepy at times, which I liked, but it wasn't so creepy that I felt like I couldn't keep going because I'm a wimp with scary things and scary movies and scary books. I just got freaked out very easily. I'm a very paranoid person. So this kind of like rode that line of being thrillery enough to be like scary but not so scary that I was like I can't keep going. Loved the twist and the diary entries in this were so good and I thought they were so well spaced out throughout the story that it didn't seem like we were getting stuck too much in the past or that we were like not getting enough in the present. It was a really great balance and Verity itself I just I'm so intrigued by the idea of creators coming up with really fucked up stories and like does that say anything about the person themselves because personally for me no I don't think it's a reflection if you write a really great villain or if you write like a really great believable serial killer story or in romance I don't believe you're like a bad person if you write dark romance and really fucked up things that happen in these stories I don't think that's a reflection of who you are as a person, but I like the idea that this kind of explored that a bit of being like, how deep can you really go? How dark can you go until you're like too far gone? That, that whole premise, that has stuck with me still to this day of just mulling that question over, especially because I'm so drawn to villains and so drawn to like the dark side of things that it's fascinating to me. I loved the twist of being like, is she actually, was she actually this horrible person? I I don't know, I like that it left it really open-ended of you to kind of decide like, what do you believe? Me personally, I think that Verity was a shitty person. I think her diary was accurate, but also I can't say that with 100% certainty and I really like that and I like that people can have different opinions of how they think the story ended. Also, I just love a great fucked up character. So Verity was kind of right up my alley. <laughs> And I also really liked that in this thriller that the narrator wasn't, what was her name? Why can't I think of her name? Sorry, whatever her name was, I liked that she was not like our typical drugged out, forgetful heroine that we seem to have in a lot of thrillers. I don't like it when every heroine in a thriller and every um, storyteller and a thriller tends to either have memory loss or is like an alcoholic or a drug addict and there's like repressed memory or like they get too drunk that they don't know what's real and what's not. That is so old to me and just so annoying at this point that I really liked that this was like a reliable heroine and a reliable point of view. Okay, next is the book that is my favorite out of this video, I think out of the three that I read and that is All Your Perfects. <gasps> Oh, mm. the the crying in this one. Um, it definitely made me cry in the way that like it ends with us and Ugly Love did, but I definitely cried way more in this one than I did for sure in Ugly Love, maybe even it ends with us. Quinn's story was just so heartbreaking. And when she had the miscarriage and then had to have the hysterectomy, that, I like, I did, I stopped on that page. Like I couldn't finish reading the page because I knew it was coming and I just didn't want to know that. I didn't want it to be true. I didn't want it to sink in. And I was so emotionally invested in Quinn and Graham. Yes, Graham does cheat on Quinn. So here's the thing for me. 
me personally cheating is not like a trigger in books for me i know for some people it's like a really hard line for them so if it is for you just a warning that this does have it for me i think because i'm like again i'm i'm very diligent with myself of separating fiction from reality but then i like ball like a baby like it's reality but I just, I have to separate that line. So in this, it's not a deal breaker for me. Would I have rather that he never did? Of course, but it was part of the story. It's part of their journey and what they had to go through. And I do ultimately think it ended up well for them. And obviously he knows he fucked up. Like he's not a perfect person, neither is Quinn. And I don't know, I didn't like hold that against Graham at the end. I was kind of able to like move on with Quinn in that sense. So I still really liked Graham's character and I liked them as a couple and I was just really, really rooting for them to be together and to work it out. I really like to see these two characters who are both like broken in their own ways and they so badly want to fix things and want to fix the other person. But they just don't know how to do that. And the fact that they refuse to give up on one another is just admirable. And the strength of these two characters is wild. And the dual timelines and dual perspective was so great. It made it all the more heartbreaking to, as you're seeing them falling out of love, you're looking back and watching them fall in love. Oh, that just made it all the more heart wrenching. It was so well done. And this epilogue right here is like the only epilogue in existence. This and the epilogue in Dismount from the Off Balance series are the only two epilogues I want in my life. I normally think they're a complete and utter waste of time, but this one was so needed and you really needed to know that like they were okay. And it was a very justified epilogue in my opinion. And I just really, I really loved it. Lastly, um, the book that I did not like. I did not like this. Um, looking back, I still would, I guess, keep my rating at three stars because is it a bad book? No, it's not poorly written. It's not poor storytelling. It just, I didn't like it and it's not for me. So I would still keep this at a three rating, but personal enjoyment, I would put it at like a two. Um, right off the bat, Ben to me was just like a giant red flag. I did not like him. Right from the start, I got like a weird factor from him. And then the first chapter that got in his point of view, I was like, ew. I didn't like him and I never came around to him the entire time. So I never got emotionally invested in him. And then Fallon, I did like her. I thought she's fine. I did like that she wasn't like the stereotypical, like really pretty, perfect girl who's like, oh, no one thinks I'm beautiful, but like is secretly super hot. And like that gets annoying of being like, come on, come on here. So I did like seeing her, you know, accept her scars and know that they're a part of her. And like, that's just how it's gonna be for her. And I liked watching her accept that and like build her self, ex self esteem up like that. But she was just kind of boring. Um, I don't think there was much to her besides the accident. There just wasn't much there. There wasn't much there for either of them. And I just, it was, it was just kind of boring. To just say what I did like, I did really like the plot. Um, I thought the plot was interesting. I liked the fact that we only see them for one day every year because obviously there's a lot of change that happens in a year in a person's life. So that was interesting to see how year by year the characters have changed and how things have affected them over the course of that year. Um, and I just think the premise was interesting. The characters were flops. They were flops for me. And for me being such a character driven reader, I am a thousand percent more likely to pick up a book with an interesting character than I am to pick up a book with an interesting plot. I can read 600 pages of character driven stories, no problem. But if I'm reading like a 300 page book with a cool plot, but bad characters, I like don't want to keep going because I'm just, I just need to be emotionally invested in the characters and I was not. I didn't shed a single tear in this book, which just shows because I cry very easily <laughs> at books and not a single tear was shed, not an eye was misty over here. Um, even with Ben talking about the accident and the death of his mother um, and then the mother's letter, I was never once tempted to cry. Um, I also didn't really care about their relationship. I thought it was fine, but also like I didn't really care about them. And then 
finding out that Ben at the end was like the root of the accident, it was kind of like, yeah, I guess that. This one just did not work for me. It didn't grip me with all your perfects and verity. Like as soon as I sat down, I was like, holy shit, I don't want to stop. This, I was like checking my phone. I was like counting ahead how many pages are left in the chapter. I was like, okay, so I have like 200 pages left. So how long is that gonna take me? Like I just, I didn't really like this one, which is a bummer because I know so many people like it. Um, but overall, these two characters were just flops. You know, not every book is for everyone and this book was just not for me. However, I do love the cover art of this one. I think the cover art is so pretty. And I do, I'm like very inspired for a painting for on my TikTok of it. Also, Ben just like sucks. He's my least favorite love interest of Colleen Hoover's that I've read, Ryle aside, obviously. Also, no defending Ryle comments here. I've never seen one here, but on TikTok, especially under Colleen Hoover's TikTok page, I've been seeing so many people being like, when are you gonna give Ryle a happy ending? Like, I wanna see where Ryle's at, or like, uh, Ryle deserves to be happy, blah, blah, blah. No, he does not. He got his happy ending. As she said, she's like, he got his happy ending. He's not in jail, he got to keep his job and he gets to see his child. That should be enough for him. So minus Ryle, Ryle aside, um, Ben is the worst to me. He's just, he just gave me an ick factor. Oh, especially all the talk about boobs. I was just like, dude, normally stuff like that doesn't bother me. But for some reason in this, everything he said was just a turn off. All right, that is the end of that. I know there are still plenty more Colleen Hoover books for me to read out there. I know that she has a ton. She has a big backlist and I think maybe now I've only read like half of them. Um, so I think eventually I'll get around to reading more of them, but I think kind of the ones that like I was really highly interested in, I've read. I think Layla is the other one that I'm kind of intrigued by right now. Anyways, if you are at the end here, thanks for watching and sticking with me this whole time and listening to me ramble. Wow. That's it for today. And I don't know what's going to be up next week. We'll see. But anyways, I will see ya when I see ya.